Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Anita Adefie. I'm an author, um, author of the book Revealed, and um, I'm the founder and CEO of Advanced Now for Food Coaching Company, where I help virtualized uh, professionals advance their careers in Canada. I'm also the founder and convener of Ladies Arise, and this is a platform that helps women um, empower women to live intentional holistic life and it's a community of amazing powerful women as well so if you're not there as a woman i don't know what you're doing please join us link is all the links to everything i talk about by the way would always be in these videos so if you need more information always look at the description you'll find it there and if you're new by the way welcome to this channel if this is your first time here you're welcome i'm glad to have you and these are all the things that i don't talk about in this place um yes i'm also the founder of low talents and that's a blogging platform that seeks to create awareness on and educate about uh, sexual violence and mental health issues and quite frankly all things that will typically sweep under the rug of culture um so yeah we're doing the silences on those things um it's not to shame or do you know put anybody on the spot it's to help us get comfortable in having conversations that are difficult to have but navigate around them and be better and do better and you know yes yeah, so so today i want to talk about something very um special <laughs> everything i talk about is special um so march 8th for many of us who know was international women's day there's been tons of programs activities policies um have been informed we've had conversations you know, in Ladies Arise, we had a very wonderful conversation with two amazing women who came up to talk about their career journeys, what the barriers have been, how they've been able to overcome and navigate their careers. I myself have spoken about, you know, what it means to be a woman and what technological equity means for people and for women and access and all of that. There's been lots of conversation. And I can't think of a better way for us to end this month than to talk about, you know, beyond the systemic issues, beyond the structural issues, beyond the cultural issues that can impact women and does impact women, I want us to talk about the individualized issues. And so those are the conversations we have with ourselves in our minds that limit us. Those are the things that we tell ourselves, you know, that that, that tells us that we're not worth it, that, that we, we do, that even if, and if we don't fix these individualized issues, the problem is the system can fix itself, the structures can be put together, the accesses can be given, but we'll still not be able to lean into the things that we have and become the versions of ourselves that we desire to be because we haven't dealt with the conversations inside, because we haven't dealt with the individualized things. And so today I want to share with you 10 ways that we as women tend to sabotage ourselves and how we can overcome those things you know um so it's just going to be a conversation i won't finish all 10 today so this is going to be a two-part series um the next one will come up next next sunday which is um you know going to be the first sunday of the of the, of the month of april so yeah happy april in advance um so yeah today we're going to touch on five of them and the next sunday you're going to see the remaining videos uh the, the remaining video on on the remaining five okay i have my cheat sheet here so today i have a cheat sheet um so you're going to see me look down a lot today because I don't want to miss this miss talk. All right. So here are 10 ways that we as women self-sabotage and how we can fix it. Now, I want to say this. I know I'm addressing this to women because there are specific things I'll talk about, you know, that might seem unique to women. But quite frankly, it's just the way that we as humans sometimes tend to self-sabotage. And this can help anybody. So please don't hear the word women and then be like, oh, yeah, this is just my sister, my mother, or my, or my, or my girlfriend, or my wife. It's for you as well, okay? Everybody listen and learn something. Even for me, as I'm as I'm going through this, as I was writing this out and thinking about it, I was learning from the experience myself. So, and it's in no particular order, okay? So number one is that we do not make demands for ourselves. We do not make demands. Now, the thing is that this is very important. You know, remember when I said that if you're not doing the structure and the systems can change, but the truth is that how can those systems and structures change if we're not placing demands on them to change? Now it can look asking for demanding for things in life can look, um, can, can take on different forms, right? For a woman, for instance, as a wife who feels like, you know what, I can't do all this chores by myself. You're never going to have that conversation 
or you might never have the change that you're looking for if you don't make the demand and put your request forward and have that conversation with your spouse or with your children or whoever. I've seen people who at 15, 16, their parents are still picking up plates after them. That my, It boggles my mind. You know, but you can place a demand. It will look like if you know you're due for that promotion at work, nobody's going to come and make that demand for you. You are going to have to go in there, make your case, build your, your, your case value, and then go have that conversation with your manager or whoever you need to have. You guys know my favorite advocates by now, the daughters of Zelophehad. Those ladies made a demand. Moses give us our father's inheritance because he doesn't have sons. They made a demand and God himself honored that demand and they challenged the status quo. As a woman, are you tired of the status quo of where you find yourself in life? Then make your demand. Life doesn't give you what you wish for. It doesn't give you what you hope for in and of itself. It gives you what you place a demand on. All right. So what demand do you need to make today? And that ties closely into the next thing, which is asking for help. So number two is asking for help. Now, those are two different things in that in the demand, it's that rather than sit down and pine and whine about the things that you know you're capable of doing, but then it feels like it keeps eluding you or there is a system in place that prevents you from having access to what you need and leaning into what you, um, an opportunity that you can have, you're going to place a demand on that. Now, asking for help on your other hand is recognizing when you're at your limits end or recognizing the part where you feel like, you know what, I, I, I need a little bit push. I need a little bit of help in this area, right? And you're going to ask for that help. Women, I don't know who did this to us. Like, I don't know who told us that we're supposed to be like some superhuman machine where we do it all, you know? And then I get it. Some of it is cultural, quite frankly, a part of it is cultural, you know, but knowing when to ask for help, knowing when to delegate, knowing when to say somebody else needs to step in, knowing when your buddy's telling you that you're not feeling good and that you need to maybe tell somebody else to say, Hey, can you help me watch my kid? You know, um, I talk about, you know, uh, um, one of the ways that you can help yourself succeed is building support structures and systems, knowing when to say, Hey, I need to go do X, Y, Z. Can you help me watch after my kids while I go do that? It, you know, or, or, or if you're the kind of woman who maybe you, you're starting to, you do all the chores in your house yourself and you're starting to drown under that. Nothing stops you from asking for help from somebody. And sometimes that help might mean that you're paying someone else to come take care of it. It might mean that maybe again, is that in asking for help, you can also place a demand to say, look, I need more help here. And I'm asking that you step up as my partner, as my spouse, as my husband, and do a little bit more than you're doing now so that we're both, you know, happy at the end of the day. And I'm not tired and worn out. And then you're full of energy, you know, and then let's not even go into that conversation where my head is going. Y'all don't want to know. All right. So <laughs> number three, not resting enough. Uh, so they're all kind of intertwined, right? They're all intertwined. The problem is that when you're, when you're trying to take it all on yourself, chances are that it means you're not taking good care of yourself. It means that you're not resting as you should, you know, are you sleeping enough? Are you drinking enough water? Are you taking walks? Are you walk, are you are you working out when you need to? Now, here's the thing, you know, last month in Ladies Arise, we read the book Becoming. You know, and I found this interesting that, you know, um, someone like Michelle Obama at the at a point in her relationship with her husband was very frustrated with her husband, who would just go to work, come back and go and then go to the gym, no questions asked, right? And she was very frustrated with that. And she felt like I want to go to the gym. How come he just goes to the gym, you know, but then she stacks it all up against everything else that she needs to do, you know, cook supper, do this and do that and do what not. And she, she, she felt in my opinion, cheated out of the process. Now she didn't sit there and pine and whine. Well, at first she did, at least that's what the book says. At first she, she felt like she did all the pining and whining, but eventually she, first of all, you know, um, um, acknowledged that she needed this. She acknowledged the benefits and value for, you know, creating the time and space for her to also go to the gym 
or do whatever that she wants to do, right? It was to make her healthy. And it was part of her self-care. She needed to feel like she was taking good care of herself. And quite frankly, to continue to take care of your of your of your family, to continue to be at that job and vie for the next promotion or or apply for that next role, you have to be alive and you have to be in good health, mentally, spiritually, you know, uh, um, emotionally and otherwise. You have to be physically, you have to be in good health. And so she made a demand on her husband to say, look. We have to have a conversation on what this looks like so that you get you, you get what you want, you get secure of yourself, you get to do you, but I also get to do me and I get to do what brings me, uh, um, you know, self, self, self care as well. Right. So whatever it is, many of us have work benefits and we talked about this over the weekend. Do you use those benefits? Go for a massage, go get that nails done, go get that hair done. You all can see that I need to get my own hair done. You know, go do all of those things. Whatever self-care looks like for you. Sometimes for me, it's that I just want to be in my bed, take up my phone, go into my Amazon Kindle and read a book. And yeah, if that's what I want to do, then you do it. You know, if it's that you want to wake up in the morning and just have some five minutes peace and quiet, do it. Sometimes I run into the bathroom, not because I have absolutely anything to do, but because I just need some peace and quiet. And now they've heard me say that. So they'll start coming from me when I'm in the bathroom. All right. So are you resting enough? Because the truth is that when we don't rest enough, when we don't take care of ourselves, it's only a matter of time. We'll start feeling like all the people around us are the reason why we're not doing the things that we want to do that brings us our own, you know, personal joy in that sense, if I'll put it that way. And if you're not careful, there'll be, you'll start to feel resentful towards them. Or you start to feel like, oh, I'm doing all these things for everybody and nobody sees me and nobody cares. Well, girl, go do you. All right. And you need to be in good health to be able to do all those other things. You can't give what you don't have. You know, somebody will say that you can't pour from, from, an, from an empty cup. That is so true. So take care of yourself. How do you need to take care of yourself? You're of no use to anybody if you drop dead. Go figure. All right. Anyway. All right. How many have we talked about now? <laughs> we've talked about not asking for help. We've talked about making demands. We've talked about resting. And then I want to talk about overthinking. Now we're starting to get into some of the hard cost stuff. You know, women, we self-sabotage. You have an idea. You want to do something. It is good. It is great. You have talked about it with five people. You have done all the research. Have you started? You're still thinking about it. And I get it because we are so giving in our nature that oftentimes we'll think about how it affects everybody. Well, how will this impact my husband? Well, how will this impact my children? Well, how will this impact this and that and that? And then add on the layers of systemic barriers and issues. And then we're like, oh, how am I going to do this and still have access to and still take care of my children or still be at my children's games or still be my children's sports? How am I going to do this? And then, you know, we only have one car. And then we start overthinking until we think ourselves out of the great ideas and potentials that we have. Many of us are sitting on ideas. Many of us are sitting on opportunities. Many of us have told ourselves, I want to go back to school to go learn X, Y, Z so that I can do ABC, you know, and then I can become DEF. I'm just throwing out the school words, letters out there now, you know, but the truth is that you haven't taken a single step because you're busy talking yourself out of those things, overthinking it, you know, and so you need to stop that and get into the doing part. There's so much power in doing that. You just need to stop thinking, write that book already. Start that business already. Start that blog post already. Start doing the YouTube videos already, y'all. I don't do all the extra beauty around my YouTube videos anymore. Not because I don't want to. For now, I don't have the money to pay anybody. And by the way, this is a call out if you're if you're volunteering for me. I love you. I see you. Please reach out to me. I need help. My videos need to look prettier. Um, you know, but if until I get that help or I have the money to pay for it, I'm not going to worry about it. What's important is the message needs to go out, and I'm gonna keep putting the message out there. That's all that's important. Everything else is just the extras and just me to look nice and maybe something about SEO analytics, or whatever. Anyway, don't want to bore you guys with that one. Point being, stop overthinking it and start doing. I mean, get on your Nike. Just do it. Okay. All right. So that's number four. And number five is that we undersell ourselves and our value. We men, oh, wake up. <laughs> you know, now let me even talk to mothers here for a bit. If you're a wife and a mother or just even one or the other, 
just even in being a wife or just even in being a mother or then being both alone, do you know how much you do? Let me help you break it down. Project management, planning, strategic planning, all those birthday kids birthday that you're planning up and down you know my kid just attended one yes now special shout out to that mom you know yourself if you see this because i'm looking at the goodie bag and i'm going oh there are even thank you cards already in there already signed thank you cards by the way i've learned that one now you know so that if i i'm not forgetting later to say who did i not say send a thank you message for coming you know already signed thank you cards follow the goodie bag you're doing all of those things that's you being creative your problem solving on a daily basis. You think on your feet. Jeez, do you know how many soft skill you're building? The way you communicate to your husband and tell him something is not the same way you're communicating to your six-year-old. The way you're communicating to your 13-year-old is different from the way you're communicating to your to your to your two-year-old. You can sit down with your six-month-old baby and get them to laugh and giggle in the cutest way because babies are always so cute. That, you know, and then you are doing all of these different things. And then you show up to a job interview and they tell you, tell me about a time you did whatever. And you're struggling to find something to pull up. Girl, you've got skills. Jeez. And then we undersell ourselves. We undersell our value. We have so much. Now, add to that, if you're doing business and then you're now working, Jesus, or you're volunteering, and some of us do all of these things combined. So much value that we carry. So many of us have been through experiences. I talk to a lot of women. A lot of women have been through traumatic experiences. You see the sexual violence that we're talking about, where so I've not even started the conversation. To be honest with you, a lot of women have been through so much traumatic experiences in the hands of abusers, sexual violence, harassment, child sexual abuse, all of it. And somehow you have built so much resilience and come out of that. And then we need to translate some of those things that we've built into either our workplace, into our businesses. Women who do businesses, I, I, I respect you so much. Because you take all of those things and then you nurture and create those things. And yet, a lot of us undersell ourselves. And research has shown, and I don't know why that is, but we need to start correcting those things. Personally, this year, I'm committed to not selling myself short anymore. In any way, I've done it before. I'm committed to not doing it. And I'm calling you out to also be committed to not doing the same. Stop self-sabotaging. You have so much value. Go and sit down everything anybody has said you have strength in write it down write it down so that you begin to see the things you've done when people say oh you know whenever you teach i really love it because you have a way of breaking things down girl you're a teacher you're good at that you're good at communicating to people in a way that it resonates with them go and write it down when you do powerpoint and all that people say oh you're so creative with how you did that own it because the reason we struggle to sell that value to someone else when an opportunity comes up is because we fail to own it to begin with. I know that a lot of us are trying to be humble. I don't want to be proud and all that. I hear you. I see you. And it's great. And it's good because it's a slippery slope. All glory to God. But God also put those skills in you. So own it. And then give him the glory. Because how can you even give him the glory when you can't even acknowledge that he used you to do it? So anyway, this one, you're starting to get, I'm starting to get into that passionate space. How many have we even talked about sex at this point? I have no idea. Okay, so we've talked about one of the ways we sabotage ourselves. We don't ask for help. We don't place demands on things that we deserve or need or want. We don't rest enough. Um, so that's three. We've talked about underselling ourselves and we've talked about overthinking it. So we've talked about five things already today. Stop overthinking it. All right, just do it. The easiest way to stop overthinking is to start doing. Because as you're doing, it starts to unveil itself and you see where to get better, where to make adjustments. Um, ask for help when you need help. All right, asking for help does not make you less. As a matter of fact, it takes a very strong person to acknowledge their limits and then reach out and ask for help. So ask for help. That's number two. Number three, please and please and please and please rest. Create me times for yourself. 
and then understand the things that help you re-energize. So now we're talking about the things that you can do. Understand the things that help you re-energize. When you know the things that help you refuel, then go do those things. For some people, it's that you just need to lie down in a dark room for like five minutes and you're fine and you're reset. Go do that every day. Schedule a five minutes. If you have to put some calendars and on schedules, put some calendars and schedules and alarm clocks or whatever you need to do. My colleagues at work, they know me. 11.50, my alarm goes off and then I'll snooze it. 12 noon, it goes off again. 12 noon, whatever I'm doing, if we're still in a meeting, bye, I'm gone. And I'll tell them I need to go and recenter. It's time for prayer and yeah, I've gone. Because if you want me to come back after one o'clock and be full of life and still continue to think through the day, because my peak period for productivity is not in the afternoon. It's actually in the middle of the night. And you said that I cannot work in the middle of the night. It has to be eight to five. Abby. So the only way my brain can re reset and function, that 12 o'clock prayer, I have to go and have it first. That's the only way I can recenter. So I will go and I schedule those things. You'll be shocked at the number of things that are on my calendar, my 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 alarm clock that sometimes go off. All right. So please schedule your me times so that I know the things that help you recenter and then schedule times if you need to and make sure that you're going to do those things. Reach out and ask for help. When you start to get to that point where you're struggling too much and those things get in your way of doing the things that matter, ask for help. It's either you're delegating by paying, so you pay for things that you can't do anymore if you can afford it. If not, then you find ways to be more efficient in how you're doing things and or better planning. You have health benefits at work, start to use them. Think of ways that you can use them. Some of you, you may need to get more creative in how you incorporate exercises into your life. If you're like me that you can't do 5 a.m. at the gym, then you have to find other ways to incorporate uh, 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 workouts into your life. If it means that you creative, get creative or creative, you know, example, dance with your children. You've worked out, you've spent quality time with your family. All right. And then instead of overthinking, just do it. I know it's not in any particular order, but I really hope that this helps someone quite frankly. And we'll continue next week. All right. We'll continue this conversation next week. I got to stop here because, you know, we've talked about just the five things and we've already spent a lot of time. All right. If there's anything else you guys want to talk about or that you think you want to add to the list, let's see maybe what you have is also on my list. And we'll continue from there next week. Please share this video with as many people as possible because there are a lot of women who are selling themselves short and are not rising up to who they, who they truly are because we keep having these conversations within ourselves with ourselves. So there's so much in you. And I want to see you unlock all the things that are in you and step into who God has created you to be. All right? Even your own fulfillment is in there. Not to mention the legacies you built. Not to mention that when you leave this earth, you can hear God tell you, well done. You did great. You did everything you were supposed to do. One thing I always say is I die empty. And I'm inviting you to do the same. I can't leave this earth until everything in me pours out that God has put in there. It has to come out. And I want the same for you. And I know it's doable. And I will see you because we'll continue this conversation. I hope you had a great March. It's the end of the first quarter of the year. Congratulations. You made it. I made it. We thank God for life and for preservation. And I know that we'll see you in the next quarter. And we'll see you next month and next week. And take care now. And bye. Bye.